Hello friends, today I'd like to present a case of Ivido retinochoroidal coloboma with a microcornea, corneal diameter was less than 10 millimeters, very shallow anterior chamber and a bulging lens surface. I'd like to show you how I managed this case, having to make a few improvisations on the way. So this was the 30 year old female patient who presented to us with diminished vision as a result of a progressive nucleosclerotic cataract. The plan was to implant the iris hooks first. You can see that while making the stab incision for the iris hooks, the tunnel of this incision is extremely long. It's more than 2.5 millimeters. This, of course, will come in the way of both insertion and removal of the iris hooks. It has to be borne in mind. The plan was to implant three iris hooks in order to dilate the pupil and then to continue with phacoemulsification. Now, because of the long length of the corneal tunnel, I found it very difficult to maneuver the hook across the pupillary edge. And with a little amount of struggle, I was able to eventually get it across. Now with respect to iris hooks, the silicon stopper can come either in a flat stopper as is my preference as you can see in this case. Now this second opening is of adequate length. Now the advantage of having the flat stopper is this flat stopper is aligned with the hook of the iris hook and therefore you can just hold the stopper and maneuver the hook easily into place. Now this is the side port incision that I'm making. Once again you see that because of the hypotenuse of the eye, I create a very long side port incision. And finally, I create the clear corneal incision in my usual location around 110 to 120 degrees. Now before I proceed, I decide to put in another iris hook just underneath the incision. So I create a stab incision which is posterior limbal and which completely avoids the clear corneal incision and you can see that I'm holding the flat stopper which is aligned in line with the hook. So once you put the hook inside you can take hold of this flat stopper and you can easily maneuver the hook into place therefore make sure that you always get this kind of a stopper and not the round stopper because it's a little difficult to manipulate the round stopper. So having popped in all the three iris hooks, the stage is then set, but I found that this hook was little long and in order to facilitate the passage of instruments, I trimmed it a bit and this was the first improvisation. The dispersive viscoelastic is coming out of the eye, which will give you an idea of how shallow the chamber is and, and also give you an indication of the positive pressure that exists within the eye. And therefore, while performing the capsular excess, I take it very carefully because if you lose the capsular excess in this case, it's going to be very difficult along with the coloboma. But that is exactly what was tending to happen. The capsular excess was tending to run out. I flattened the anterior chamber first with visco and then I put in a dispersive viscoelastic above it to flatten it further. Because you try to forceps would further open the incision and shallow the chamber, I decided to try to complete the capsular excess using the cystitome itself. So with multiple centripetal pull movement, I'm able to successfully retrieve this runaway capsular excess and bring it back. And finally, eventually, I was able to complete the capsular excess even though it was slightly eccentric. The successful completion of capsular excess is very important in these cases. So now during hydrodissection, the hydrodissection wave actually passes and causes the soft lens to pop out of the capsular bag. Now because the chamber is very shallow, I do not want to do a tilt and chop maneuver or I do not want to create or give phaco power within the anterior chamber. So I try to manipulate the lens back within the bag and I found it difficult to do so because of the trapped fluid between the capsular bag and the lens. 
So I put Visco and then I try my best to put the lens back into the capsular bag. Then I proceed with FACO emulsification. So while trying to introduce the chopper, I found that the side port incision was too long and it was very difficult to insert the chopper. So I created the second improvisation. Of course, this is a technique which I learned from Dr. M. S. Ravindra. So I created a shallower tunnel in the floor of the incision itself. And through this, I was now able to insert the sharp chopper. Now once with the sharp chopper and the FACO probe was in the eye, the disassembly of the nucleus was quite easy. I was easily able to chop this nucleus. However, the nucleus was not rotating. So I priced the small pieces of the central nucleus sclerotic portion of the cataract. This was like a grade one nucleus opalescence. And using mostly vacuum and very little FACO power and exchanging the chopper with a Sinsky hook, see I am entering along the floor of this tunnel, which I created. This will seal quite well, it's not going to give us problems later. Using the Sinsky hook, I tease the epinucleus and the cortex downwards and I am able to eat up most of the epinucleus in this cataract. Well, the rest of the cortex can be removed with simple irrigation and aspiration. Now, the fact that I put a iris hook underneath the incision will definitely help in the introduction of instruments. Now, you see the iris is getting tagged because the iris tends to get lifted up between the iris hooks. But when you put a hook underneath the incision, then the introduction of the FACO probe and the coaxial IA probe will be much easier. Uh, which is why we do it. It has to be done in the posterior limbal approach and deeper to the corneal incision. So once all the cortex has been successfully removed, the bag is nice and clean. At this point, I implant the hydrophobic acrylic lens within the capsular bag. Now the capsular bag is generally 10.5 millimeters in diameter. I'm sure it's much smaller in this patient whose corneal diameter itself is around 10 mm. Therefore, you find that this uh, IOL length is about 12.5 millimeters. So the haptic is tending to fold even though it's within the capsular bag. So with gentle rotation, I'm able to settle this haptic within the capsular bag. So once the haptic is settled nicely within the capsular bag. The plan is to wash off the viscoelastic from within the capsular bag. Well, the abnormal orange glow clearly indicates the presence of a retinocoroidal coloboma also. This retinocoroidal coloboma along with the iris coloboma was in the inferonasal side which is the typical location for the coloboma and it was extending up to the optic disc. Now what finally remains is the removal of the iris hooks and that would complete the case. So while removing the first hook I remove the stopper completely and I am able to quite easily remove this iris hook by just twisting it upon itself. But while removing the second iris hook, again I ran into a little trouble because the corneal stab incision was very long, the hook was getting hitched in the inner lip of this corneal valve. And whatever I tried, I found that it was very difficult, almost impossible for me to pull it out without damaging the corneal valve more and more. Yeah, so I took a decision that now I'll just cut through this iris hook, leaving the small stub behind within the eye and then with a little viscoelastic, I floated into the anterior chamber and using an intraocular forceps, I safely pulled it out from the eye. And this is the third 
improvisation I had to do in this case to complete the case. The final hook was quite simple to remove because the incision was of adequate length. So keep the incision more posterior to the limbus and keep the incision about 1 to 1.5 millimeters. With respect to the placement of iris hooks, this will facilitate easy insertion it will facilitate the right position as well as facilitate easy removal. So this completes the case, the clear corneal incision is now stromal hydrated and a little bit of preservative free moxifloxacin is installed in the anterior chamber. I thank you for your attention.